how's it going? My name is Jay and welcome to the channel and welcome back to Takanyo Emergent Biopark in Jurassic World Evolution, a project where we're working on creating a biologically accurate park filled with dinosaurs. Now we're going to be doing that by the use of mods and of course before we start just got to say modding is not officially supported by Frontier, the developers of Jurassic World Evolution, so if you want to mod your game do so at your own discretion. But I gotta say there's some amazing mods out there, the modding community is absolutely booming right now, we're getting some incredible new uh, mods out there, new species, new terrain tools, so many cool things and I'm going to be showcasing a lot of them in this park. So what are we going to be doing today? So first off as you can see on screen we're going to be working on this uh, main street, so the area around this innovation center which kind of splays outwards and besides that we're also going to be introducing three new species. The first of which is going to go in this kind of circular habitat that you see on screen right now. Now you may be thinking, Jay, that's tiny. You're going to put a dinosaur in there? And the answer is actually yes, because there are some very tiny creatures in this game, specifically the Comsung Nathus, which is what we're going to be putting in here. And we're going to be using a mod by Jagged Fang Designs. Their mods are always top notch, incredible quality, and their Comsung Nathus is no exception. It looks incredible. But of course, these guys are such tiny animals, so they're going to fit perfectly in this really tiny spot here. Because even though it's, it looks small, when you put in the Comsung Nathus, they still look like absolutely like they've been dwarfed by this uh, space here. It is completely fine for them, and I think they look good in it. I do wish we had some glass fences or something, because they could totally escape out of those those fences. But they, they look so good in here. And I was thinking, because... um. As I've had some comments on my Planet Zoo video saying that I should maybe talk about the animals more in my Jurassic World Evolution videos as well, let's talk a little bit about these animals. So Comsognathus, of course, is one of the smallest dinosaurs of all time. In fact, at one point we thought they were the smallest. Now, of course, we know there's other much smaller animals like Microraptor, um, Epidexipteryx and stuff like that. So we've definitely found a lot more smaller animals, but they're very cool. They're from the Jurassic era. Um, the Jurassic period, sorry, and they they definitely had some interesting paleobiology. They lived alongside a more famous uh, creatures such as uh, Archaeopteryx, which a lot of people used to call the missing link between dinosaurs and birds, even though now we know birds just are dinosaurs flat out. So it's um, interesting to see that. As far as we know, these guys are relatively speedy, tiny dudes. They're most likely were covered in a sparse coating of feathers. And we kind of have an idea of what color those feathers might be from related species, such as Sinosauroptrix. So what that um, what has been done is that they've looked at the fossilized uh, feathers and stuff, and they found evidence of pigments using microscopes and stuff like that. I'm not super familiar with the technique, but it is very cool to see that we can now determine the color of these creatures. And I think what Jagged Fang Designs has done with their version of the Compsognathus is use kind of similar coloring to what we know Sinophoptrix had, so it has this really nice tan brown color with some like banding and it looks really good. Anyways, uh, besides the Comfort Nathus, as you can see on screen we're working on the high street area now, or the main street, and I've added in some lights there. I really love blending these Jurassic Park elements with the Jurassic World elements and I think it looks really really good. Especially with those lights coming down at, at night, it looks so good. Here I will take a bit of time to finagle these buildings into place. But I think once they're all in place, the high street does end up looking quite cool. You'll see it in the um, the live section of today's video, which will be coming up in something like eight minutes or so. So do look forward to that. I think it, uh, today's live section is pretty, pretty chill. We're just looking at what we built, but I think it all turns out pretty well. As you can see, I'm finagling around with the paths here. The path system draw school evolution can be used to create some amazing things, but it is tricky. If you want to see some really amazing path work, go check out Evolution Square on YouTube. She does some incredible work with paths, so would recommend. Um, besides this, we're going to be adding in two new species, of course, like I mentioned. That is going to be happening in the second half of this initial part of the video. And what we're going to be adding in is two herbivore species. We're going to be adding in the Myasaurus and the Stratosaurus. The Myasaurus, we're going to be using a mod by... Um, Northfire on the Nexus, so do check out. I Northfire does some incredible mods. So, for example, the terrain that you're seeing on screen, all of it, that's a Northfire mod, really brilliant work. And of course, the animals themselves, he does quite a few different 
animals which look really really good as well so do check them out in the description the myasaur is of course one of them and the Stereptosaurus, oddly enough, is going to be um, a base game animal. We don't use very many base game animals, but there are some which are really good. Stratosaurus being one of them. It is one of my favorite Ceratopsids in the base game. Uh, it's just really, really well designed. The skins look so good. Like, really good. Uh, one of my favorite skins in the game, period. I do have to say, with the base game dinosaurs, there is such a a large kind of gap between the really good ones and the ones which just aren't so good. Like, for example, like, if you look at animals like the Stratosaurus, the Pentaceratops, or, you know, even the less accurate ones like the Spinosaurus and stuff, the designs are so good and well done and stuff like that. But then you look at things like the Deinonychus, like, what on earth were they thinking with that one? Or even the Velociraptors, like, they just... Well, to be fair, I, I kind of have to say the Velociraptors... They did fix with the Jurassic Park uh, DLC. Now we have amazing Velociraptors. But those initial ones were just, I don't know, man. They just weren't very good. But um, ever since we've got significantly better stuff. And like, not this is not like saying the original designs are bad by any means. Some of them are. I will never forgive the Deinonychus. Like, that just, it's such a weird design. And I don't know at all what they were thinking with it. But um, the... General designs in Jurassic World Evolution are pretty good for the most part. Especially the herbivores, for the most part, they design the herbivores quite well, and I really do like them. Uh, I love quite a lot of the sauropod designs to find. You know, the herbivores, like the hadrosaurs, are usually pretty good. I like all of them, I think. So, uh, especially some of them are really good, like the Mutsubarosaurus. Absolute brilliance. That really good design. So, <laughs> that was just a random rant for no reason, I guess. <laughs> But this is pretty much the final look of the high street. Not much else is going to be changed here. I'm just going to add in a little uh, little planty area here, basically. I'm going to use the redwoods as usual. And then i uh, probably put a little bit of a fence around it. And then we're going to move our way over to the other side of the park, which is by the entrance. And we're going to work on a few things there, which include the herbivore habitat and also... I am going to be adding in a new entrance to the park. So, so far, the only entrance is via helicopter. But see, as we come back here now, we're going to get started on a new way to enter the park. So first off, we're just building this little observation area where you can look out at the rest of the park. I found using this um, that technique of filling in the path by just going from one side to the other repeatedly works really well and uh, gives you relatively good uh, coverage without um, making the path look weird or anything like that. But yeah, that looks pretty nice, I think. The little observation area, the guests can go and walk around it. Just making a little curved path around the visitor center up here. It was a bit tricky, it doesn't seem to want to line up perfectly, but eventually I managed to get some some sort of decent curve going. It is not, it's not perfect by any means, but I think it's okay. <laughs> a couple more things we're going to do up here is we're going to add a plaza in a second. Uh, I believe that's what we're doing now, actually. So it's directly in front of the visitor center. Big old circle. This park is going to be filled with circles. I'm going to add in some of these Jurassic Park buildings. So the cafe, uh, gift shop, and I believe a toilet as well. And I will change the orientation of these buildings slightly, as you can see here. And then what I'm going to be doing is adding in some like outdoor seating area for these cafes. Of course, there's no like picnic bench decorations or anything. I wish we had some, but I think it looks really good like this. It just gives like the idea that maybe this is like a garden area or just somewhere people can walk around and hang out and it's behind the cafe so I hope it translates like the idea that this could be an outdoor seating area for the cafes. Adding in some plants of course, gotta make it look nice and outdoorsy, keeping that tropical vibe which is really interesting I gotta say the the fact that we have the redwood trees in like what is essentially a tropical climate is quite bizarre in this game. Of course, the, I know they want to harken back to the Lost World where Isla Sauna had redwoods, which still doesn't make an awful lot of sense. Like, I can't think of an island anywhere in the world which would just randomly have redwoods. But I don't know. Maybe, I'm, I'm to be fair, I'm not great at geography, so maybe there are some, but I don't think so. I don't know. But I think they, if you use them well, they do look quite good. We're making a bit of a lake here, which is where this uh, second habitat is going to go. And one really cool thing about this lake, I think, um, that we managed to do later on is 
we use the um there's a new invisible fish feeder mod so the fish feeder in the game but invisible basically and it makes it look like there's just fish swimming in the lake it looks so cool and I, I really like how that looks quickly let's talk about the two extra animals that we are going to be adding in here which are the myosaur and the strachosaurus so the myosaur of course is uh is one of the hadrosaurs and a really cool thing about the myosaur specifically is that it means good mother lizard because when it was discovered in this specific fossil range called uh, Dinosaur Park, um, I believe it was Dinosaur Park, it was on, oh, sorry, it was in the Two Medicine Formation uh, where you have this area called Egg Mountain. And they found essentially thousands of bones of these myosaur with eggs and young and it just looked like a big nesting site, which is kind of amazing. The fact that we found a huge nesting site of these dinosaurs. So we know like so much detail about how they raised their young, how they would have um, kind of laid their eggs and looked after them and fed them because we have found evidence that they fed the young once they hatched. It, it's just so cool. And I think it's a very, uh, it's just very interesting, really. It's um very, very cool. They are very much um, still... What am I going to say? Basically, I was going to explain how they walked. So they are capable of walking both bipedally and quadrupedally. So they do that in the game as well. And the herds of Myasora that we know of could have been incredibly massive. We're talking thousands of individuals. That Imagine seeing that. That would have been insane. Um, as far as we know, there might have been quite significant sexual dimorphism with Myasora as well. One of the genders, also one of the sexes, could have been much larger than the other, but we don't know which one, which is quite interesting as well. The other animal we're going to be adding in is the Styracosaurus, which is, again, one of my favorite ceratopsids in, uh, in the base game. I added these two in the single habitat because they are both found in the two medicine formation, but uh, they might not have necessarily lived together uh, or been there at the same time. But I thought it would just be cool because they were both in the same formation, you have them hanging out in this uh, big open area like this. I wanted to kind of look like, you know, if you go to a zoo and you see a big herd of antelope with maybe like some rhinos or something, kind of like that. So that's kind of the vibe I was going for. And I think it turned out pretty okay. Here I'm adding in like um, a ridge out here. I wanted some natural barriers instead of just fences. And to obtain natural barriers, you can just add these sort of mountainous areas in and then use the invisible fence mod, which is linked down below to um, kind of close it off. But that's pretty much it. As you can see, I've just added in the fish on screen. But that's pretty much it for the time lapse. We're gonna hop into the um, the live portion of today's video where you're gonna see me walk around and show you what the park looks like at the moment. Uh, before that, we're gonna see the dinosaurs emerge, of course, from the hatchery. And at the end, we have some really good cinematics, uh, which I'm trying out some new stuff with. I'm trying out the Nvidia filters to give it some depth of field, some sharpness to make it look a bit more Kind of nice and crisp, essentially. So hopefully you guys like that as well. Anyways, we are coming to the end of this. So I will see you guys in a bit in the live section. And uh, yeah, see you then. All right, here we are in the game, everyone. And as you can see, this is going to be our main high street area just by the lake. What I'm going to be doing eventually is expanding out the sandbank by the lake and adding in some of those hotels and stuff like that. I think that'll look pretty cool. But otherwise, I'm pretty happy with how this high street has turned out. Uh, as you can see, we've just got a few shops. I'm going to add more along the sides eventually. And we've got these really nice lights along the side as well. Really loving the fact that we can mix uh, Jurassic World and Jurassic Park era buildings. It really helps with the aesthetic, I think. Here we've got a couple of these nice new redwoods that we've got, one of the uh, mods. 
Of course, do you check out the links in the description if you want to download any of these mods. And if we go ahead here, you can see the shops, and we've already got a few guests just wandering around, which is nice. And, um, yeah, not much else to say here. I've added a few of these nice palm trees, more of the redwoods, and of course the shops. I think it looks pretty cool, and I like that um, with these uh, paths that go out from the sides playing out, we'll be able to kind of direct where the guests go. And we're probably going to have habitats going down here, of course, and then over here. We have the monorail, which will take us right back to the kind of the entrance area, which we'll talk about in a second. But of course, one more thing we have here by the uh, high street is, in fact, this circular small habitat for the Comsop Nathus. Oh, wow, I said that weird, Comsop Nathus. So these guys are remarkably tiny, then so hard to see, and I think that makes them perfect for, these, uh, for this really small habitat here. It's so tiny, but these guys are even tinier, so it works completely fine, I think. And they're really great. Of course, by Jagged Fang Designs, they've got this beautiful new feathered model for the Comsoc Nathus, and I think they look beautiful. Uh, of course, the fence here wouldn't be in the most realistic. They would be able to squeeze through these gaps, so it'd be cool if one day we get a mod for, like, glass fences. I'm not sure if that's even possible, but that would be pretty cool. So let's have a look at some of these guys. They are so small, and this one's just having a little piece of meat here. Absolutely beautiful skins by Jagger Fang Designs as well. Very natural looking. The feathers look great. The hands look great. I like how the tail is kind of like, it looks like it's a, quite a bit denser than the others, uh, than the other feathers in the body. We also have this um, brighter vivid skin, which I'm using to kind of represent like uh, maybe a male variant or something like that. We've got a bit of shallow water in here for them to play around in. But for the most part, it's, it's actually really hard to see them because of how small they are. But there we go. We've got just, just the slightest look at them here. But uh, what a beautiful animals. They've just done such a good job here. Uh, really lovely. So yeah, that's the Comsognathus. Let's actually just watch this one have a little bit of meat as well. Really gorgeous animal. I love how they actually jump onto the, the feeding platform to grab the meat and then eat it uh, outside of it, which I think is really cool. But yeah, very, very cool animals. And I quite like this circular habitat down here with the plants. I love these low-lying ferns that we get. So nice. Anyways, here's the monorail where you would enter the high street area. If you go around the monorail, you'll come back to the entrance. I love that we can place the entrance monorail. So I imagine people will come through here, the rival tunnel, which is uh, manually placed thanks to one of the mods which you can find in the description. Uh, I believe it is part of... Uh, one of the, um, ex I can't remember exactly which one it is, one of the expanded mods basically. Um, but yeah, here we go down to the main entrance area, you can arrive by helicopter as well of course, and you can see I've done quite a bit of work here as well. Uh, here we have a little plaza with a couple cafes and a gift shop, and with the cafes I decided to create a bit of an outdoor area here, which I imagine uh, if we had the decoration for they would have picnic tables, and you could go out here and have some food, and there's a little toilet here as well. Some nice plants and things like that. And uh, if you go over here, you can of course look out at the park proper, which we haven't really finished. There'll be habitats here and stuff. And over here, of course, the monorail that takes you into the high street. Looking over here, we have a new habitat with um, a single hadrosaur species and a ceratops species. So what we have is the Myasaurus which are by Northfire and they are beautiful. I'm loving Northfire's uh, Hadrosaurid and Aquanodontid mods. They make them look really, really nice. Uh, he's done like Alanosaurus, I believe, um, the Iguanodon as well. They all look really good, so I absolutely love how they look. I know Myasaur is the most popular dinosaur in the game. A lot of people are the best, biggest fans of them, but I think they look great. Really nice herd animal to get people started in the park. I'm not a fan, just like a super fancy dinosaur, but I think it's really good. And one thing I really like about this mod is that the skins look really natural and you can have um, each skin, so like vibrant, vivid, whatever, all of them together and they still look like a, you know, a cohesive herd. And I just think they look so good, like, oh wow, they finished that plant really fast. And the eyes, the like, moistness around it, really beautiful. And I think they look so, so nice. Anyways, one other, the other dinosaur here is the Styracosaurus. One of my favorite base game dinosaurs, I think. I think they did a really good job of the Styracosaurus. This isn't modded at all. It just looks great. It's pretty accurate to the real animal for the most part. And uh, I think the skins especially look really nice. You can see the other one. There's, I think, three in here. 
I named this one Benjamin for some reason. I cannot remember why. <laughs> I think my partner must have asked me to do that. But it is a beautiful animal, as you can see. It's a bit in the shade, but the skin is gorgeous. You can see the markings on the frill and down the head. Absolutely beautiful. Really, really nice. And yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this habitat. As you can see, a relatively low fence around the outside, because I don't think they'll be able to escape it. And then a higher fence around the side here. This is another kind of, um, like, observation area through the high fence but there's like um, a few of these signs which I imagine will be information signs and you can go there and have a look as well and you can probably hear and see the dinosaurs from here when you're having a picnic or eating some food. One more thing you may have noticed is these fish. So that is actually the fish feeder but it's been made invisible by a mod I think by Zach. I can't quite remember. Again link in the description and the author will be there as well. And I think it looks really good because it just looks like a bunch of fish hanging out. So it's nice to have that in the lake, I think. It looks pretty cool. And also on the outside, as you can see, there's no fence around the back. That's because I used the invisible fence mark, so it just looks like a natural barrier here with these rocks and stuff. And I think it looks pretty good. But yeah, that's it for today. Uh, there's not much else I need to say, really. That's all we've done. And the next episode will probably continue and maybe start building some of the bigger habitats. Maybe a carnivore habitat would be pretty cool. I've got so many new mods I want to try out. Lots of new species mods as well. So lots of new stuff I think to look at. So I'm very, very excited for that. And I think it will be a lot of fun. So with that all said, please do like the video if you don't like it. Do uh, subscribe for more Jurassic World Evolution content. I upload Jurassic World Evolution videos every Friday at 5pm UK time. So. If you like the sound of that, do stick around the channel. And as always, I will see you all in the next one. Bye!